At ScienceToyMaker.org, there are several external links to good instructional videos for making tumblewings, including one by John Collins, the tumblewing inventor. If you're the kind of person who likes to learn the basics and figure out the details yourself, one of these external links might be the way to go. By contrast, the instructions that follow are divided into tiny baby steps. The amount of detail would drive some people crazy. But other people, starting from zero experience with aerodynamics, will appreciate having things spelled out when they're just getting started. It doesn't take much to start flying, but you'll have to have a place with very still air. It's almost never calm enough to fly outside, even if it doesn't seem windy. Inside, the cross breeze from open windows can cause problems. Ventilation systems can cause turbulence too. The less congested your space, the better. But that won't stop you from flying it at home. In addition to some space with calm air, try to find a big piece of cardboard to create the wave. There's no hard and fast rule to how big it should be, but the bigger the cardboard, the bigger the wave. Meaning, bigger pieces of cardboard will be a little easier to learn with. It can be hard to find a big cardboard box, but even if you only have a small flat object, such as a large book, you can manage an extended glide. It's still good practice. To start making the tumblewing, print out the PDF pattern from sciencetoymaker.org. And there are three different sizes on the sheet. What size you choose is a matter of personal preference, but the medium sized piece is good to start with. However, if you only have a book instead of a large piece of cardboard, then make the smallest tumblewing. Usually, it's better to make the tumblewing from a piece of paper ripped from a telephone book as opposed to the printer paper that the pattern is on. Here are two tumblewings, identical, except one is made from telephone book paper and the other is made from printer paper. The printer paper tumblewing has a steeper glide angle. That's because the printer paper is more than twice as heavy as the phone book paper. So tumblewings cut from telephone book paper fly slower and are easier to keep in the air. When you can't avoid air turbulence, a heavier flyer made directly from the printer paper might be less tossed about in the air currents, but it still won't fly in outright windy conditions. Tissue paper weighs even less than phone book paper, but it's harder to fold, so start with a piece of phone book paper. Back to making the phone book paper tumbling. This tumbling is best for people just learning. Rough cut out the pattern outside the solid lines. Tape it onto the phone book paper, but only at the ends. Now follow the outside solid lines of the pattern to fine cut the double layer. Don't cut the ends where the tape is yet. The tape is the only thing holding the layers of paper together. Make sure the pattern doesn't slip as you cut it. Cut accurately. Don't rush. It's not just appearance. Your tumbling will be easier to fly if you pay attention now and work carefully. Do cut the corners, but don't cut the very ends with the tape. You still need those. All four dashed lines should be folded. Before you start folding, notice that now, even with a double layer, the wing is floppy and weak. The long folds you're about to make will make it more rigid. Making the folds will be easier if you use the end of a ballpoint pen to squish the paper fibers right at the fold. This technique is especially helpful where the line curves because folded curves can be very difficult. It doesn't matter if the pen has ink. It's the ball at the end that gently and precisely scores the paper fibers. This operation might be easier if you do it on top of a magazine. Score all four lines with a ballpoint pen. If you cut through the paper, you are pressing too hard. It's important that you realize that one of the long, thin flaps will fold up and the other one will fold down. I use a finger to lift up. Make sure your folds follow the dashed line. The fold should not run into the tips.
Then pick up the whole thing and use your thumb and finger to fold the other flap. Do whatever works for you. After you've made both the long folds, go back and make the creases pretty hard. Crease hard to establish the folds. Once you've established the folds, gently flatten them out a bit. Next, fold the stabilizer ends up to 90 degrees. These tips keep the tumblewing stable when it flies. Having a right angle is important because if the ends slant off to one side or the other, the tumblewing will not fly straight. When you've made the four folds on the dash lines, Cut the very ends of the pattern so that it's separated from the foam book paper. You should notice that the long folds have now given the tumbling rigidity. It's not floppy anymore.